Hi everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to take our gas pump into Substance Painter for the first time and do a test bake with it. And a test bake is meant to look for any areas that we may need to fix in our mesh before we do our final bake. So yeah, let's jump right in and check this one out. All right, let's start. Um, before we make some high poly versions of these objects and bake our normal map, what I want to do first is quickly do a test bake um, just to see if we need any adjustments in our meshes. So let's open up the outliner first and let's expand our group. Um, we have a lot of history here, so let's uh, delete history and freeze transformations. So go into object mode, grab everything, and then delete history, freeze transformations. We have uh, one piece of history here that didn't get deleted. We can just press delete. That'll get rid of that one. And then we have one object that's outside of our group, which is our fuel gauge objects. Um, we can move it into the group by holding down the middle mouse button and dragging it onto the group. There we go. Now it's part of the group. Um, I'm going to minimize it. And now what I want to do is make two duplicates of this. So I'm going to press Control D twice. So the first duplicate will represent our low poly and the second one will represent the high poly. Uh, let's rename the first one to the original though. This is the one we will um, go back to. There we go. And then the other ones, we'll just leave them how they're named. Um, I'm going to press H on the keyboard though to hide the original. And I'm going to hide group two as well. I'm going to open up group one. And then what we want to do with this one is um, we want to soften all the edges on these objects. So let's go into object mode, grab everything, and then go to mesh display, soften edge. And now if we take a look at it, I'm going to turn off wireframe on shaded. You can see that um, the hard edges are gone. It looks kind of lumpy. Everything's curved. It doesn't look quite right. So what we'll be doing is we'll be baking some of those hard edges from group two onto group one, right? And now what we want to do also is um, minimize this. You can also see these aren't named yet. I'll be naming these after these meshes are finalized. Um, for now though, let's just minimize this. And then I'm going to select group one, go to file, export selection, and then under the file type specific options, and then under, um, I think it's include then geometry, um, that path there, you'll want to pretty much uncheck everything here. You can leave smoothing groups on though. Um, but pretty much like everything else, we'll be leaving it as is. Um, it really, for tangents and binormals, this one depends on whether you want a, the texturing program to calculate that or you want Maya to calculate it. I'll be getting Substance Painter to calculate it, so I've got that one checked off. And then later on, um, once everything's done, we'll probably triangulate at the very, very end as well. All right, let's name this gas pump, we'll call this low, there we go. And now what I want to do is just hide that one. I'm going to press H on the keyboard. I'm going to unhide the um, high poly version, so group two. Let's select this group. This one we can just leave alone. If we take a look at it now, it kind of has you know, the, the look we want. Um, we're not really trying to get these edges soft or hard perfectly right now, just roughly to give us an idea, right? So let's select group two, go to file, and then export selection. And we'll name this one um, Gas Pop High. All right. And then um, now what we'll do is we'll jump into Substance Painter and do a quick test bake. All right. So here we are inside of Substance Painter. Let's load in our mesh. Go up to the File tab, choose New, and then choose Select. You'll want to find your gas pump low, which is here. Click Open. And um, let's go through a few of these settings. For the document resolution, you can leave it as is. You can change that at any time. And we're just doing a quick bake right now. For the normal map format, choose DirectX if you're exporting to Unreal Engine or choose um, OpenGL if you're exporting to Unity. For compute tangent space per fragment, um, we'll need to check this because we didn't do it inside of Maya. So it's recommended to do it inside of Substance Painter. Um, I've gotten into the habit of doing it, but I haven't really noticed um, an issue either way, to tell you the truth. And everything else, leave it as is. Click OK. After a few seconds, it'll load in our low poly mesh. And you can see it's the one where we smoothed all the edges. So it's looking a little bit soft and lumpy. Um, let's go through the navigation of the viewport. So it's exactly the same as Maya. You'll hold down Alt and the left mouse button to orbit. Alt plus the middle mouse button to pan, 
and Alt plus the right mouse button to zoom. And then your middle mouse wheel will do a snap zoom. Um, to rotate your lights though, hold down Shift and the right mouse button and drag, and that'll rotate that, um, um, the lights. Right. Now let's um, bake that high poly onto this. So go to your texture set settings. Down here you have um, bake mesh maps. Click on that. And I'm only concerned about the normal maps, so I'm going to uncheck these other ones. And then what I want to do is for the output size, I'm going to choose 2K. And for apply diffusion, I'll turn that on. It's recommended. And then uh, for high defi definition meshes, click this button here and we can load in our high poly. There we go, open. Um, down here, afterwards, we'll be matching by mesh name, but we're not, we don't have that set up yet because we're still working on our meshes. So just uh, leave it as always. Everything else leave as default and then click Bake Selected Textures. Then after a few seconds, it'll bake um, that high poly onto here. And so you can see it's baked those edges onto our low poly. And it's done actually a pretty good job. We'll need to go in and inspect it, but at a distance, right, this is pretty acceptable. And if your player never gets close, you, your baking process is pretty much done, right? But um, to get a better bake, what we'll wanna do is um, go in and inspect it, right? So you can see over here, um, um, there's a little bit of um, issue right right there. Talk about that in a second. Uh, just these areas where these cavities and places where um, crevices and such, right? The rays don't get in as well. So um, down here at the front, we have the fuel gauge objects. So we can choose to leave it as kind of like these, um, let me reduce the brush size. Um, more angular look or we can soften those edges on the high poly so that's an option the front section you can see we're getting some major jaggies right here so we can choose to um, give that shell more document a more resolution in the uv space or we can do another projection which is what we'll do um, down at the bottom it's looking pretty good um, around the back right it's looking all right as well here it's looking pretty good. Around here though, let me get into this area. Um, so here, I'm just gonna rotate the lights. You can see that if I get in here, the rays didn't really do a good job of getting in here. And an object like this, um, you'll want to separate. So one of the reasons why we modeled as separate objects is later on, it makes the baking process much better. Right? And so this object here, we'll probably have to go back into Maya and separate that into two objects so that it can bake better, um, bake those objects better. The hose is something we can make a high poly version of, right? Just to smooth that out a little bit. So that's an option. Won't take long to make um, a high poly version of that. Um, over here, we can also decide if we want to make a high poly version of this. Um, over here, the fuel nozzle, this body section, right? Um, we'll want to make a high poly version to see if we can improve that shading because topology wise there's not much there right so that's the reason why we don't get as smooth sh uh, shading as possible but we'll try and bake a high poly version onto that the caps we can make a high poly version of over here this object can be really stubborn right so when you see something like this these kind of jaggies um, on an object this small it either needs a lot more resolution in the UV or we'll probably need to harden some of these um, some of these edges on the low poly. So that's something to um, keep in mind, and which is probably what we'll do down here, right? Another area where the rays really didn't get into properly, um, which we'll fix by baking my by mesh name. All right, that's pretty much all there is on this object. I'm gonna add a material on quickly just to show you one more thing. Over here, where the um, triangles are, right? You can see that. Um, we're getting some of these um, jaggies and artifacts on our normal, right? And we can fix that by hardening this edge. So we'll try that and see if that resolves it later as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, next, we'll go into Maya and readjust our mesh. All right, so here we are back inside of Maya. Let's unhide our groups. So I'm gonna press H on the keyboard. So we made a couple extra groups of our objects. For a test bake, we don't need them anymore, so let's delete them. 
There we go. And we're just going to work with the original. Um, next, let's take a look at this object over here. So with this object, the rays are having trouble getting into this area. So let's separate it into two objects. So select the object, go into edge mode, double click this edge up here, and then hold down shift and the right mouse button and choose detach components. Now go into object mode and select it. I'm just gonna open up this group so you can see it. It's this one here, and we can separate it now. So go to mesh and separate. And you can see there's a subgroup and we have the top piece and the bottom. Let's just uh, ungroup it. So we'll select the subgroup, go to edit and ungroup. There we go. And we can also delete their history and freeze transformations again. And there we go. Now, um, what we want to do is go into our UV editing workspace and check these. So go to workspace, UV editing, and um, let's box select everything. In this window, let's go to UV shell mode, hold down the right mouse button, go to UV shell. And what I want to do is I just want to double check the shell. So I'm going to press F to frame in on it. So lucky for us, when we detached it, right, we cut along a seam that was already cut. So we don't need to make any adjustments to it. But if you were to say have to detach from an area that wasn't already cut, you would need to go in and fix that. Okay, so now let's uh, take a look at this front shell. So this one here, you can see that its edges aren't that straight. So let's do another projection for the shell. So select the shell and we're gonna project along the front, which is my Z axis. I'm going to open up the UV tab, go down to planar. And what I want to do with this one is I'm going to project along the Z axis, click project. And I'm just going to move the shell to the side and you can see the edges are a lot straighter now. So that's awesome. Um, let's turn on UV distortion mode though and make sure that it looks okay, which it does, right? That's very acceptable. And so we'll move it back into place. Um, before we move it back into place though, you can see that the shell is quite big. Let's match the texel density. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to get its texel density. I'm going to select this, sh this shell and set it. And now, hopefully I don't have to scale it, but I'll move it roughly into place and I'll move some of the other shells out of the way. Those ones are there. And there we go, lots of space. So it's back into place and it has enough uh, padding. So um, let's go back into our regular workspace. And now I'm just going to go back into object mode as well. Um, we're going to make some high poly versions of our objects uh, for the bake, right? The high poly to low poly. Um, but we'll want to name these first. So you'll want to name it roughly um, or something that relates to the objects so you can remember. Um, but you'll also want to add a suffix and the suffix will be underscore low. So I'll name my objects and I'll fast forward this part for us. All right, so all of our objects are named now. They have the suffix underscore low. And um, as a reminder, you can name it whatever you want as long as you remember what these objects are. Um, what we're going to do now though is um, duplicate this group. So I'm gonna select the group, press Control D to duplicate it. I'm gonna expand it. And you can see that these objects down here have an underscore low as well. We need to change that to underscore high. So I'll show you how to do that. Select. Um, the first object, hold down shift, select the last one so that we have them all, and then go up to the modify tab, go down here to search and replace names, and then I'm just gonna reset this. What we wanna search for is underscore low, and we wanna replace it with underscore high. And then because I've selected them all, I'll just choose the selected option and click replace. And just like that, Maya has renamed these for us. Awesome, let's collapse the group and we'll rename them as well. So I'm gonna name this one the low group. So we'll call it gas pump group underscore low. And this one will be the high group. So gas pump group underscore high. 
And then I actually want to make one more duplicate. Later on, we'll be um, making edits to this low group. Um, like we might be triangulating it, for example, and it's really hard to undo that. So you'll want to save a backup that's an original so that you can edit it if you need to. So I'm going to duplicate this one and call this the original. There we go. And then um, we're getting up there uh, for time. So we'll have to finish this in the next tutorial. And in the next one, we'll be uh, making the high poly version. So a few of these objects will make high poly versions for the baking and we'll do our final bake then as well. So um, see everyone then.